Greetings from Tokyo. I'm Trip, and welcome to the Hammer of Wrath. This week, I'm going to show you my 3,850-point Dark Angels army. Let's go. Thanks for joining me in the studio. The lion has returned. So this week, in preparation for the coming of the Primarch, I'm going to show you my Dark Angels army that was four years in the making. But first, I want to take 10 seconds to talk about temples. Now in Japan, as you're walking down the streets of Tokyo, it's not uncommon to see a small shrine or temple nestled in between the giant skyscrapers. But with a simple one-hour subway ride to the outskirts of Tokyo, you can see something like this. A temple, several hundred years old, nestled in the woods and hills. Now, not only is it a great place to get away from the hustle and bustle of everyday city life, but also makes for an amazing retreat for the spirit. And not unlike these temples, the Dark Angels live on The Rock, a shattered remnant of their homeworld Caliban that has been transformed into a floating space monastery. So I'm going to walk you through my entire Dark Angels army, unit by unit, and show you exactly how I accomplished it. But not only that, I'll show you exactly how it started. Now the temptation with an army showcase might be to start with the HQs, the leaders of that army. But I have to start with this, the Primaris Apothecary. I originally got into the hobby in 5th edition around 2011. And by the time 2017 had rolled around, I was actually getting out of the hobby. When a co-worker of mine, Logan Lubera, yes, that Logan Lubera, gave me this Primaris Apothecary for Christmas. From this single seed, this entire army grew. I thanked him for the gift, placed the model in a drawer, and promptly forgot about it. But on one dreary January afternoon, I pulled it out and on a whim decided to paint it as a dark angel. And that's when the trouble started. You see, I had convinced myself that I wasn't going to get back into the hobby. And although I really enjoyed painting this new Primaris model, I promised myself that I wouldn't. Now, soon of course, that promise became to keep it to a kill team. And so I purchased Lieutenant Zachariah and kit bashed him into a leader of the Death Watch. I raided the bits box that was at the back of my closet and used some parts from the Death Watch kit, as well as a Deathwing Terminator cape that I happened to have traded for years before. I also created some purity seals using rolled green stuff. I had an absolute blast. But in the end, I was only kidding myself, and having painted two amazing Primaris models, I went to eBay and ordered the Space Marine half of the 8th edition starter, Dark Imperium. Needless to say, I was absolutely blown away by the quality of the kit. The new Primaris sculpts were, well, to put it simply, head and shoulders literally above the old Firstborn Marines. The proportions were perfect, the poses were dynamic, and I had an incredible time assembling and painting the entire set. I happened to purchase the Dark Angels Veterans upgrade sprue as well, so I could add hooded heads and other accessories to the models to make them more Dark Angels. While painting Dark Imperium, it occurred to me that no Dark Angels army is complete without the Deathwing. So I went to my local game store, bought three copies of the Deathwing kit, and then went straight to eBay and bought the Deathwing Terminators from the 6th edition starter, Dark Vengeance. I mixed and matched the parts from the kit, building four different squads, giving the sergeants power swords and lightning claws, equipping the units with plasma cannons and cyclone missile launchers. I had a lot of fun putting these together. If you're interested in the paint recipe, there's actually a tutorial on my blog. I'll link it in the description below. Now this same kit can also be used to make the Deathwing Knights. So having realized that, I went out and bought a fourth copy of the Deathwing box. Assembling these guys was a lot of fun. These models might be some of my favorite in the entire Dark Angels range. Now I know new Terminators are coming, but there will always be a special place in my heart for these. Now with the new rules previewed for 10th edition, I'm sure that at some point I will paint up a Land Raider in Deathwing colors to give them something to ride into battle in being able to spill out that front assault gate, charge and attack in the same turn is going to be incredible. But that same kit 
also makes all the special characters from the Deathwing Command Squad, so I went out and bought a fifth copy of the box. I built a chaplain, a champion, an ancient, a librarian, an apothecary, and a proxy for Belial. Regular viewers of the channel will recognize this proxy from one of the earlier videos on my channel, in which I use 3D printing to enhance some of my characters from the Deathwing. Now, I've never been a fan of fine cast, and I'm especially not a fan of the official model of this character. There's just something about the pose of the legs that isn't very great. So I created this kit bash and, knowing that he was going to be an HQ, put him on a double cork base to make him stand over the others. Now, of course, with the new addition, there are rumblings of a new model, seeing as how Azrael was just given a new model, and the lion has returned. So when that time does come, this proxy will simply serve as a strike master. In that same video, I also used 3D printing to enhance the chaplain from my Deathwing, bringing him more in line with the aesthetic of the modern chaplains using the large purity seals hanging off of the chest. I also added some ancient tomes, incense burners, and purity seals to bring him up to another level. And as 2019 came to a close and 2020 approached, I'd finished my Deathwing Terminators and was ready for the next step. And then the world went straight to hell. Not knowing what the world was actually in for and expecting the quarantine to be about a month long, I went right to my local games workshop and grabbed some models to keep me busy at home. I picked up No No Fear, the middle tier starting box for 8th edition. The set allowed me to add Hellblasters, Inceptors, and another squad of Intercessors to my growing Dark Angels army. I also purchased Lazarus, because as we've established with Zachariah, if Games Workshop makes a Primaris Dark Angel, I'm going to buy it. Now, a lot of folks use this as a base for a Primaris Azrael conversion before the official model was released, but I already had something in the works. At the same time, I had purchased the new Primaris Librarian and began converting that into my Primaris Azrael. I ordered the 6th edition HQ's head and I used Astarath's wings. Now the base is actually 3D printed, and if you check my channel, it's one of the first videos I did on 3D printing to improve models. Being on a kit bashing roll, I snuck out one last time before everything shut down and bought the new Primaris Chaplain, as well as the Dark Angels Interrogator Chaplain. Took both models and sort of smashed them together to make this, a true scale Dark Angels Interrogator Chaplain. It's amazing how productive you can be when you have uninterrupted hobby time, and during the lockdown, I completed all of those models in a month. But fortunately, as we were all starting to go a bit stir-crazy and the summer approached, 9th edition launched with the absolutely incredible Indomitus box set. Games Workshop has made some absolutely incredible starter sets in the past, but this one was the most amazing to date. The inclusion of all new units, like the Outriders, the Assault Intercessors, and the Eradicators are absolutely amazing. I used all of the Blade Guard from this kit to start my new Blood Angels army, but you'll notice that I extensively converted the Outriders to be Ravenwing Command Squad. These are the newest additions to my Dark Angels army, and there's actually a separate video for that on the channel. Whilst working my way through the Indomitus box set, I also saw the absolutely incredible Eliminator models, and, being a fan of snipers and small specialized combat squads, I went out and grabbed a box. Now, I'm not a fan of the $50 price tag for only three models, so what I did was went out, purchased the easy to build reavers kit, which comes with three reavers, and using the extra bits from the multi-part eliminators kit, created three additional eliminators for only $15. I detailed that entire process on my blog, and I'll link that in the description below. Encouraged by my Primaris Azrael kit bash, the last model I purchased in America before moving to Japan was the Primaris Captain, with the intent to make a Primaris Ezekiel conversion, and I finally got around to that in January of 2023. There's a separate video for that on the channel. This army and all of my other Warhammer projects are detailed on my blog, as well as our Discord server. Joining our Patreon at any level grants you access to our private Discord server, where our small but growing community helps each other become better hobbyists every day with honest feedback and encouragement. Higher tier members also get access to behind the scenes photos, 
update vlogs, early access to YouTube videos, and the ability to vote on next week's video topic. I want to take a minute to thank my patrons, our Malabarer Adam Fox, our Sledgehammer members Cody Newton and Joshua Kreba, and our Thunderhammer bearers Josh Hannon and Matt Mitchum. We'd love to have you as part of our community, so check out the link to the Patreon in the description below. And there you have it, 3,850 points of completed Dark Angels ready for the return of their Primarch. I am beyond excited for the new Lion L. Johnson model. I managed to pre-order it here in Japan last week. I know that there were a lot of issues around the globe with that. Fortunately, I was able to get a copy. I will be picking it up later this week, so you can look forward to a video of that in the future. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Army Showcase. It was my genuine pleasure to make and share it with you. I want to take a moment to mention my online t-shirt shop, bakingsodatees.com where I create one-of-a-kind, unique designs available nowhere else. Please do check out the Patreon linked in the description below, as well as the blog. There's almost 10 years of hobby history there. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one.